We welcome you once more to Windsor, Ontario for tonight's action at Acumen Stadium. It's a battle for first in the OFC as the Hamilton Hurricanes and 3-1 take on the 3-0 St. Clair Saints. Good evening, everyone. I'm Justin Prince alongside Mies Badiquaz as we get set to see how tonight fares out. Two teams looking to try and see if they can get first solidified. Yeah, and uh, of course, Hamilton being one of the staples of the league, uh, uh, they're always in the mix, and them sitting, as you said, three wins. They do have the one loss right now, but mm -hmm. both teams having the three wins, this will put the winner into first. Peyton Galvin, the quarterback for Hamilton, eight for 17 entering today, pass attempts, but four touchdowns and two interceptions. He launches now, throw, traffic intercepted. Picked up by the Saints around the 38-yard line. That was James Duke on the throw more so. And so the interesting plays continue. St. Clair forces the INT. Yeah, and that's just, it's, it's a bad decision. You can't do that. Billy Patterson Jr. Is, has over-the-top coverage on there, and he has tremendous ball skills. And you had a bracket under over. That was double coverage. Unless you have a giant tall receiver like the Calvin Johnson Megatron type, you're not going to be able to complete that. And it was re really thrown up. That, that, in essence, is more of a punt. But unfortunately, it was on first down if you were Hamilton. Now the Saints get that quick turnover back, and maybe, just maybe, they'll get another drive and turn this up. 14, even 10 points would be great coming off of a turnover. 6.40 to go in the first quarter of play. Ball spotted at the 39. On the rush, Doyle Marshall gets to about the 41-yard line. So a small run forward for Doyle Marshall. And remember, had some missed time already this campaign, but despite all that, is still in more than 200 yards rushing because of how he performed last week. Yeah, just a, a little standoffish right now from the offensive line. I don't see the urgency to fire off and engage and sustain some blocks. Uh, I know Coach Rice said they were working on some things and it was a little bit better as the week went on, but I think he wants those bigs to take over and sustain some of those blocks. Second and eight from the 41. Gannett, the quarterback, for his second drive. Yute finds space again. Getting around the 40. Surrounded by a sea of black and white. Brought down at the 40 after five seconds of tackles. So here, again, offensive line does a half-decent job, but more importantly, Matt Gannett does a nice job of sliding and stepping up into the pocket and delivering that strike to that deep in-cutting route, and Ute once again makes the catch, and in this time, like you said, five seconds, six seconds of dragging tacklers, and he puts it now at the 40-yard line going in. So first and 10 at the 40, once more for the Saints, approaching the final third of quarter one. About five minutes to go in the quarter. Coming up, three in the motion for Gannett. Goes for the jet sweep. Tristan Rutherford brought across the 35. Tries to juke out. This time the whistles draw it dead around the 42 to 33 yard line. Okay, so for a receiver, ultimately you're running, like you said, the jet sweep. You're going to the outside. Anytime you run to the outside, the concept is simple. You stretch it until you can't. He kept stretching, 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 picking up positive yards until he ended up getting nine. Had his pursuit, had he stopped and stuttered and turned it up too early, might have been tackled. Stretch, if there's not the stretch, he could have crammed it. Last resort is to cut it back. That was a very disciplined run by a wide receiver running a stretch zone running play. And enter they go bunch, trying to push with the line on second and one. And they get it up for the first down by a couple yards. So first and 10 inside the 30. Yeah, and I really like the way all the green jerseys are belly down forward about two yards down the field right now because that means your quarterback is likely laying on top of you, which means, like you said, they easily got the first down. And now you're set up in as you approach the red zone and the scoring area. Leading that push, by the way, as the... The factor quarterback on that was Javier Lewis. So Gannett gets back inside the huddle. First and 10 from the 29-yard line. Gannett trying to build upon what's been a 409-yard three TD season. This time finding the short completion. Trying to break some tackles. Daniel Bumbaco gets inside the 10. First down. 
again, good job by stepping up into the pocket by Gannett, and he patiently waited for his receiver to clear. The receiver did a good job of stopping that dig route so that that way it didn't carry all the way over to the safety. Once he caught it, he spun back to the boundary and picked up five, six more yards. But unfortunately, it looks like we have an offsides, Justin, against mm. the offense. So maybe one of the receivers jumped the gun a little bit, and that's going to negate the big play, and it's going to bring up a first and 15. So just like that, instead of first and goal, it's going to be first and long. Ball spawn at the 34-yard line with 3.30 to go in the first. And St. Clair already two victories against London entering tonight in the home-and-home -home series, dropping the B-feeders to the mid-table. Do the motion from right to left. Gadet looking to his left. Looking for options. Forced to scramble right. Trying to throw short, complete. Got enough to get inside the original sticks. Second down. Yeah. Laurier. Decent back end coverage by Hamilton. There was really nothing too much down the field. Uh, I, I think maybe the matchup might have been on the backside of that where it looked like he had ISO coverage. You, you have a big receiver and number seven, um, Burmaster, by himself. So I think maybe he wanted to maybe look his way a little bit more. But either way, it was still a positive play. You got the penalty yards back. Second and 10, ball spotted at the 29. Looking to his left, Gannett. One-on-one -on -one coverage, end zone, Burmaster, call his number, touchdown! And we mentioned a couple scratches tonight. Their main kicker, a scratch. Their main running back, a scratch. Several defenders, also you can group into that as scratches entering tonight. James Duke. First and 10, ends up having a handoff, taken around to the right side and nearly to the sticks. Second and about two on the schoolie run. And last week, London did a tremendous job of running the ball against the Saints defense. So I know the Hamilton team watched the film and did their homework. Uh, Hamilton has had some success running and they've been able to get some chunk yardage on this. So I, I'm not gonna be surprised if they try to stay to the run, but obviously they've dug themselves a big hole being down 28, but second and two is extremely manageable. The box stacked up by St. Clair, the blitz coming. Quick throw on the bubble screen and tackle just around the first down markers for the first down. Luke Lemessier with his first reception. Yeah, the ball literally got to the paint and that's all they needed to from the 25 to the 35. Uh, no need to even consider bringing out the chains in this one. Setting up for first and 10 now from the 35 yard line. About halfway through the second quarter, 7.23 to go up on the scoreboards. On the handoff, tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and, and this is this is exactly what you do not want to have happen, getting in that second and long. Their passing attack hasn't been all that solid this year. They're going to be predicated on, their offense is going to be predicated on getting positive yards on first down. And that was just a misassignment because you can't let a linebacker find himself two yards deep in the backfield and tripping up the primary ball carrier at the line of scrimmage. Second and 10. One receiver of the motion, Bea. Now looking to try and get out of it. Quick sack and a quick fumble. And a fumble recovered by the Saints in this case scenario. Again, this time the pressure got them and that's why they can't be behind the chains. They're not built right now, at least early, like seeing what I see, they're not built to pass. They're built to try to lean on you. And in this case scenario, the pass blocking just wasn't there. Coach Morenzi dials up a blitz. You get the sack fumble, and now you're giving the Saints the ball back after just scoring less than three minutes ago, a chance to put it from the 26-yard line in. And, uh, like, Soyge is now back in, and I would literally just throw the ball up to Burmeester again. I would take the big body, and he's Burmeester hasn't been on the series for... Burmaster. The la Burmaster, excuse me, hasn't been in for the last two series. I'd just be throwing it up to him again right now. Keep an eye on that lower side of your screen. Tanner Dockstader to the matchup. Keep it to the ground to start things off. Soja, QB run. 
Gets it to about the first down chains and then some. Exactly that, Justin. That was a designed QB run. There was no indication that he was throwing the ball. He patiently let the linemen get to their levels and the lead blocker find first spot linebacker and Soja was able to pick up 11 on that run. First and 10 inside the 20. The red zone, St. Clair's been making a home inside of it with how things have gone. One-on-one -on -one coverage, once again for Burmaster. This time, another option play. Soja, QB run, gets some blocks, tries to carry some, first and goal, about the one on the tackle. Another first down, gets it all the way down the one yard line. There was a close call there. Uh, Marshall Doyle was almost guilty of a peel back block. And, and my eyes first tell me that it actually was. Uh, and he put his hands up knowing full well. So it might have been missed on the field because that's a major foul. You can't block back towards your own end zone. And it looked like he did, even though it was in front. They go for power, trying to set things up on the bunch. So just sets up under center. First and goal, trying to get over the edge of the line. So just still trying to scramble, whistles fly, and they say he's short. He's short, his forward progress was short, so that was a good job by the interior of the Hamilton defense to take that completely away. There was no surge this time. The last short yardage power back set they had, you saw Green Jersey's belly forward for two yards and the quarterback fell on top of them or who the ball carrier is. And it looks like they're going to swap out a blocker, try and bring in an extra fullback. Pappen now comes into assist on the block. So they take a one of the wide receivers. It's Sean Johnson. This time stepping back away from the power, and a flag is up as the clock reached zero right at the snap. Yeah, and the late substitution and the lateness in the huddle, and that's going to result Time in count violation. Count violation, and they're going the up to now the sixth. Five yard penalty. So they're, they're going backwards now. That's two plays that they got absolutely nothing out of. And now they're going to be second down and goal from the six. So instead of a power option, it looks like now forced to set things up back shotgun look. Just about a minute and seven seconds from the three minute warning. Pappen stays in to help block Doyle Marshall at the back. Four wide receiver set, setting up. Second down and goal. Trying to find space, Burmaster ends on touchdown, his second. 